Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents that sensational operetta success of a few seasons ago, Song of Norway, starring Gordon McRae as Edvard Grieg and his guest star, Ira Petina, in her original role of the Countess Louisa Giovanni. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, as the composer, Edvard Grieg, I shall tell you how he found greatness in his concerto. On an enchanted hill called Trollhagen in Norway, I used to play when I was a child. With me would be Nina and Ricard, my two dearest friends. And we three were pledged together in the solemn bond of the very young. But Nina went away. Years passed. Rick began to write his great poem about Norway. And the urge began within me to set his words to music. To compose a work that would express the beauty and spirit of our dear land. A Song of Norway. Then one day, Nina returned to me and to Rick, and we had a great reunion back in our beloved Trollhagen. <laughs> Nina, is it really true that people in other countries know so little about us? Oh, they think we're savages. To the outside world, we're still Vikings, a people of mountains and ice. Oh, come now, Rick. You, Edvard, could do so much. A man whose music is as no region as a fjord. See, Nina? Rick's still waving his flaming sword. Sword. Fjord. I've made a rhyme. Oh, but you're not supposed to, Edvard. Rick has always been the poet, ever since we were children. And you were always the princess, Nina. And you the minstrel, Edvard. Oh, again we stand on your screen hill. The poet, the minstrel. The princess still. in the sun with you to guide me. I will guide you. My darkest battle is won if you're beside me.
realization soon came to me that I was in love with Nina now more than ever. But asking her to marry me carried with it a problem. My earnings as a composer were painfully small. The solution came with the arrival in our village of the fabulous Countess Luisa Giovanni, a famous opera singer. She'd come for our Midsummer's Eve festival, and our simple people stood agape before this dazzling lady. <laughs> and your little village and your charming, charming city. Thank you. You're very kind. It is quite different from your grand opera, Countess. Poof, grand opera. It's pretense and pencil. Grand opera and I have met and parted. From now on I live, laugh, and love only for today. Give me today as yesterday modo. I'll never look back over my shoulder. That day, when the Countess heard me play the piano, she told me she was going on a concert tour that would take in all the great cities of Europe. And then I stood there in amazement when she proposed I go along as her accompanist. I hesitated, but as far as the Countess was concerned, the matter was settled. Edward? I must call you Edward, n'est-ce pas? Edward, when I heard you play, I decided, poof, there he is, my accompanist. I promised to give her my answer. So I heard to talk with Nina about it. As usual, Nina understood perfectly. Edvard, I've already asked Rick to tell the Countess that you will accept. But, Nina, it means being away from you again. And here in our lovely northern twilight, I'm seeing you as if for the first time. Edvard, darling. And with the sight of you comes music. Can you hear it? Yes. It's so near it touches us. Music. Of the wind. In the trees. That seems to say I found you. I found you. I've found you. Strange music in my ears. Now as 
to ask you. Will you marry me? Oh, yes, Edvard. I will. I love you, Edvard Green. Oh, my <laughs> darling. So, Edvard, you will be my new accompanist. Aren't you happy? Yes, Countess. No, 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 no. Not Countess. From now on, it is Luigi. What's that music? The festival is starting. Friends? Nina, may I tell them? Yes, Edvard. Friends, Nina has consented to be my wife. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Edvard? Yes, Countess? So silly of me to forget my first concert engagement in Amsterdam. We must leave at once. Edvard, we must pack immediately. But this is our holiday. Couldn't we go tomorrow? Now. Now. Not tomorrow, but now. I'm sorry, my dear Nina, but the life of an artist is just like this. So, come and back. We must be going. Rick, I'm sorry. Our work together, the music for your poem... You I... can do it when you come back, Edvard. And Nina, I'll miss you, darling, so very much. You'll never be too far away, Edvard. I shall always have your music in my heart. Ringing clear... <laughs> second act of the Song of Norway in just a moment. But first, the other day, Jim Berryman, well-known cartoonist of the Washington, D.C. star, was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for the Outstanding Cartoon of the Year. Although stories about Mr. Berryman appeared in newspapers everywhere, few people learned that the first picture he drew, at five years of age, was of a locomotive pulling a freight car. Today, he still is an ardent railroad fan. The Berryman family has an extensive model railroad system, and when they travel, they look forward to going by train. Each time, they try to take a different, well-known train, and there are few famous named trains with which they are not intimately familiar. Mr. Berryman is but one of hundreds of thousands of persons, including many leaders in business, the professions, and the arts, whose hobby is railroading. Throughout the country, there are rail fans who build and maintain model railroads, who collect both historical and modern railroad objects of almost every kind, and who take trips by rail just for the pure pleasure of going places on trains. 
But whether or not you are a rail fan, you will enjoy traveling by train. Since the end of the war, the railroads have installed enough new passenger cars to make up nearly 400 new trains. They represent the latest in today's styling, appointments, and invention. Cars are spacious, well-lighted, have comfortable seats, large and well-equipped lounges, and hundreds of other improvements to make every mile of your trip more pleasant. Yes, the person who travels by rail has unsurpassed comfort, convenience, dependability, and safety. Extras, which mean so much, whether the trip is to the next city or across the continent. This is another reason why the railway is the best way to travel. And now back to the second act of Song of Norway, starring Gordon MacRae as Edvard Grieg, and his guest, Ira Petina, as the Countess Louisa. My concerto, Our Hill of Dreams, and Trollhagen seemed far away during the months that followed. Paris, London, Vienna, with Louisa, as usual, in complete charge of things. Allow me to present my protégé, Edvard Grieg. And soon the country boy from Norway became the lion of the salon. Edvard, I want you to meet another celebrity, the famous playwright Henrik Ibsen. Another coup for Louisa. Edvard agreed to collaborate with Ibsen on his play Peer Gint. Although Nina and I had been married for some months, we were becoming estranged. And this added to my distraction. She remained discreetly in the background, politely refusing Louisa's invitations. Such as the fateful night when I'd finished the music for Pier Gint, and to celebrate, Louisa had given a glittering party. You hear it, Mark? They're applauding for you. Soon the whole world will be applauding for you. I know, Louisa, and I'm grateful for everything you've done for me, but... I... Sing oh, yeah. Louisa, they want you to sing. Thank you very much, my dear friends. I'll sing a song that Edvard wrote especially for me when we were in Vienna. Remember, Edvard? <laughs> By whose two arms I am held in three arms am I three a flame in my heart and my life's a frost and like a moss among the my dark. came another triumph for Louisa. For myself, I could feel nothing but a great sadness. I accepted the praise of the guests mechanically. It was Nina I was thinking of. And then, to my astonishment, I saw her walking quickly toward me. Nina! Nina, what is it? What's wrong? Edvard, a letter just came for you. Special post. It's from Rick's father. Rick's father? 
Why should he write to me? Let me have it, please, Nina. Oh. Edvard, what is it? It's Rick. Rick, Nina. He's gone. Oh, Edvard. No. This note. He left it for me. Dear Edvard, the day is passing and our lovely fjords sparkle with the last light of a dying sun. It is so with me in my life, for I can hear God whisper. To you, Edvard, I leave Norway, the maid so fair, like crystal to behold. Nina, we're going home to Trollhagen. I failed you as I failed Rick. Edvard, darling, you love me enough to give up all this forever? Love you enough? Oh, Nina. I hear you ask if I am yours for keeping. Shame that a doubt should end. went home to our dear hill, and upon that hill we built a house, and Christmas came. Just think, Edvard, our first Christmas in Trollhagen, where we played and dreamed, you and I and Rick. Yes, dear Nina, it was here in our hill of dreams that you first said, I love you, Edvard, So Look, Nina, the mountains are asleep under the snow, like giants under white blankets. Do you remember, Edvard, how Rick used to write about the mountains? Tonight I keep remembering his poem. It needs your music, Edvard, he said. You will find it and make it live. Sleep? Sleep on, my sleepless Norway. Thy chill dark star will yet burn brighter for thy sleep. The words fit into this night. Nina, as I sit here at the piano, those words bring back the memory of Rick's voice. Beyond, far beyond the span and space of all place north, and before, oh, long before the face of time fell upon the fjord, the mountains loved the sky. The sun knew the earth, and the land bore spring.
Ulf's dream, a song of Norway. You've kept the promise at last. Yes, Nina. We three are together once more. And Norway will answer his song with her own. The song of Norway ringing clear through the Hira Patina will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Gordon McRae giving his warmest thanks to the members of the supporting cast. Dorothy Coulter as Nina and Gilbert Russell as Rick. In Song of Norway, with musical adaptation and lyrics by Robert Wright and George Forrest, based on a play by Homer Curran. Song of Norway was adapted for the Railroad Hour by Milton Lazarus, who also wrote the original stage play. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Remember that whenever you ship by rail, your money is working in four different ways. It pays for safe, dependable transportation. It helps ensure better and more economical service in the years ahead. It promotes business for industry and jobs for people in all parts of the country. And it means taxes that help pay for the education of your children and the general public welfare. Yes, for the country and for you. It's good business to do business with the railroads. And now, here is Ira Patina. Gordon, it was a great pleasure appearing for this Association of American Railroads in this exciting production of Song of Norway. Uh, you played the Countess when Song of Norway opened in New York, didn't you, Ira? <laughs> yes. It ran three years and I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> well... When are you going to play it again? Now, now, no summer of boss now. <laughs> well, we'd love it, Ira, but this is only a half-hour show, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, maybe sometime soon, Gordon. Meanwhile, I shall be listening every week to the Railroad Road Hour. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and next week on the Railroad Hour, <laughs> we'll hear Victor Herbert's Naughty Marietta with Nadine Connor as our guest. Nadine? Wonderful. That's the date. All aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so on until next week. Goodbye. Norway was presented by special arrangement with Edwin Lester through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, who will soon release Ma and Pa Kettle Go to Town, starring Marjorie Main and Percy Kilbride. Gordon McRae is currently seen starring in the Warner Brothers Technicolor musical hit, The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Now it's the voice of Firestone and Eleanor Steber on NBC.